is Nancy Chernin, theater critic for the Dallas Morning News, and I am going to be talking with Dave of Dave's Gone By for UNC Radio. Here on the 13th annual Total Theater Tony Show, we're going to step away from Broadway for just a little bit because the Tony voters decided, thanks to the American Theater Critics Association, to award a regional theater Tony to the Dallas Theater Center for all the work that they're doing and their history. Well, I don't know that much about DTC. It's been a long time since I've been in Texas. But someone who is very familiar with Dallas area theater and loves to talk about it and write about it for the Dallas Morning News is Nancy Chernin. She is the author of the upcoming children's book about Irving Berlin, the immigrant boy who taught America to sing. That's coming out early next year. And she is a member of the Dallas-Fort Worth Theater Critics Forum. Please welcome to the neighborhood for the very first time, Nancy Chernin. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Dave. It's so great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. And I do love to talk about Dallas Theater and Dallas Theater Center. Do they, in your opinion, deserve the 2017 Regional Theater Tony? If so, why? Absolutely. This is an extraordinary theater with an extraordinary history. Our current artistic director, Kevin Moriarty, who is also chair of the TCG board, he has done some remarkable things here in Dallas. Actually, one of the funniest things that he said, which is so true, is that Dallas Theater has been one of the best-kept secrets for years. When I asked him how he felt that the secret was out now that they won the Tony, he says he's happy to pass on the mantle of the best-kept secret to another theater. Yeah. So this season you're saying has been pretty interesting too at Dallas Theater. Like right now they're doing what would sound like kind of a typical old play that every regional theater would do, Inherit the Wind. But there's yes. there's history there and something different going on. Well, absolutely. Inherit the Wind had its world premiere here in Dallas under Margot Jones, who is one of the leaders of the regional theater movement. She picked up this show after seven Broadway producers said, no way, this whole story about the Scopes Monkey trial, creationism versus evolution, too controversial. She did it right here in Dallas, a place where people think of as very conservative. And, of course, as, as you know, it was an enormous hit. Now Kevin Moriarty is doing it again, but he's not doing it the way it was done back then. What he does reflects a fresh sensibility that he has brought here to Dallas and has made him a leader in the theater movement. His Inherit the Wind is done with a cross-racial and cross-gender cast. So we have a remarkable black actress named Liz Michael, and she is playing the William Jennings Bryan character, Matthew Harrison Brady. Hmm. She's doing a remarkable job. And his idea was that he wants to make sure that people feel that these issues are relevant now. He wanted to strip away the sense that, oh, this is something that happened a long time ago. Isn't it quaint what happened a long time ago? Over and over again, he keeps challenging us to see shows in a different way, even when he did his recent adaptation of The Christmas Carol, which he adapted himself. He cast a female actress as Scrooge, Sally Vale, who did a wonderful job. He also did A Christmas Carol to show Scrooge as a factory owner. So you saw him in a factory. You saw many people affected because more people can relate to people working in a factory than they can for just one clerk, one man. So in every way, he tries to take a fresh approach. There's also fresh theater being done at DTC, because I can think of it as a place that does premieres, but there's a new musical coming up shortly there. Absolutely, and, and actually it's the second of two musical world premieres that he's done. The first one, Bella, is it went from Dallas Theater Center to Playwrights Horizons. Uh, the second one that we're all very excited about is Hood, which is a fresh musical adaptation of Robin Hood, and it's by Douglas Carter Bean. You may oh. know him from his adaptation of Cinderella, the Rodgers and Hammerstein Cinderella, and Louis Flynn. They're working together, and, and they're using puppets. I'm very curious to see how this is going to work. I mean, there are people, but there's also going to be extensive use of puppetry. Since the uh, DTC is winning the Tony this year, it's basically based on probably what they were doing the previous season or two. Were there other highlights that you can remember from not 2016-17, but the year or two before? Under Kevin Moriarty, there have been some Give It Up went to Broadway as Liz 
Estrada Jones. He has been working closely with the public theater. So plays that have been done in partnership between the Dallas Theater Center and the public theater in New York, such as The Good Negro, Giant, Fortress of Solitude, and of course right now Bella and American Tall Tale. He is building relationships with New York companies, but also regional companies all over. And he's been very active in working with regional companies right here. He did a co-production with a local company, Katamia Theater Company, called Deferred Action, which deals with the whole topic of undocumented workers, issues that are so relevant right now. Oh, and the other thing that was super exciting was that he took an idea that launched at the Public Theater in New York, Public Works, which brought hundreds of people to the community on the stage, and he has created Public Works Dallas. It was such a joyful experience. They did The Tempest, and we had 200 people from our community, young and old, on the stage working with professional artists, people who had never been in the theater before. He's breaking down barriers, making theater accessible, and all the tickets were free. Whoa. You make a really, really strong case for Dallas Theater Center, but there are other theaters in your area that you cover, places like Contemporary Theater and Dallas Summer Musicals. What are your thoughts over the past season of the work that's being done elsewhere in your area? I've been very impressed with it. I think as people have worked together, everyone is getting better. I do believe that Dallas has gotten to a place where theaters are not competing against each other, they're helping each other out. You have even a small company like Lyric Stage, which premieres new musicals. They're about to open Pure Country, which is a world premiere musical, which I'm looking forward to seeing this weekend. Dallas Summer Musical has signed a contract with Broadway Across America. It's going to be bringing all the latest and greatest musicals, including Hamilton's going to come here. Finally, everyone's so excited about Hamilton. But the other thing that Dallas Summer Musical does is the DSM High School Musical Theater Awards where they send the winning young actor and actress to New York to compete in the Jimmys, the National High School Musical Theater Awards. And last year, both contestants won scholarships, and one was a finalist. And one of the same kids who was a finalist, John Fredrickson, is going back again. He won again. So we're going to be watching that closely. A lot of our theaters here give opportunities for youth. Very impressed with Katamia Theater Company because of what it does telling stories about the Latino experience. They also premiere new work. Even our Dallas Shakespeare Festival, yes, they do their Shakespeare in the Park, which, by the way, is modeled on New York Shakespeare in the Park, but they're doing a world premiere adaptation of uh, Quixote this Mm. year. So a lot of people are taking chances with new work, mixing it up with the classics, doing the classics in a fresh way, and a place for new voices. The Jubilee Theater and our African American Repertory Theater and Soul Rep Theater Company doing plays about the African American experience. We've got a lot of interesting things going on here. Now we're talking with Nancy Chernin from the Dallas Morning News. Since you're a first timer to the neighborhood, can you just give us a quick bio of how you became a theater critic? You know, I, I grew up in New York City, and my earliest, happiest memories are taking the express bus or the subway with my cousin Bill to see all the Broadway musicals. And we always used to sit in the front row mezzanine. I remember that. And I have just loved theater for as long as I can remember. The way it communicates, the way it speaks to me. I mean, I got to see the classics. I got to see musicals. I loved reading musical texts and also theater text plays studied Shakespeare at my alma mater is Harvard University. I have a master's from Columbia. I was a theater critic for the Los Angeles Times in San Diego for years before I came to Dallas. When I came to Dallas Morning News, we had a a wonderful theater critic named Lawson Tate. I covered a lot of the children's theater until Lawson retired and they offered me this position and I was thrilled to take it because this is a very exciting, vibrant community where people really care about theater and they care about making connections with patrons. They care about making theater that matters. Since you came from New York, you get to go back to New York and write about theater 
for your hometown or your new hometown. So you've been to see a few of the shows, at least from this Broadway season. Some of your quick thoughts about what you've seen? Extremely strong season. I w- it was interesting. I was chatting with uh, Lauren Reed, the CEO of Broadway Across America, which is now working with TSF, and I said, it just seems like there's such a strong selection here. And she thought that a lot of shows were holding back last year because they didn't want to compete against Hamilton. And so you've really got an abundance of riches here. I was so moved by Come From Away. To me, it was a musical we need right now because it's about kindness in a cruel world. The most horrible thing happened. 911, so many people killed and killed at the hands of people who were just killing indiscriminately. All these passengers who were diverted to Gander, Newfoundland, found kindness in Gander, and it changed their sense of humanity for the better. I also uh, got to interview Captain Beverly Bass, who was one of the captains on the plane that diverted to Gander. She lives right here in Argyle, Texas. And there's a character, the character is called Captain Beverly Bass, and it's based on her words and interviews. And she's played by Jen Colella, who is up for a Tony Award for Best Featured Actress. And boy, is she deserving. The show is deserving. Dear Evan Hansen is amazing and remarkable. It's moving. It connects with young people who are struggling with not fitting in by being overwhelmed by social media. And I have to say that it was a privilege to see Natasha Pierre in The Great Comet of 1812. They reconfigured that theater in such a unique way. The audience really felt part of the action. The actors were interacting with the audience. It was not only a wonderful story about, again, kindness and forgiveness ruling the day, but also a love affair with theater and about how we are interconnected. Theater is not just something you watch. Theater, done right, is something you are part of and you are communicating with. There's a dialogue. Even if you're not speaking, there is a dialogue (laughs) with the performers, with the performance, and The Great Comet really got that. Well, one of the things people say about theater critics is they're jaded, they just plot along, and they only find the negative stuff. But talking to Nancy Churning of the Dallas Morning News gives the lie to all that. You can feel her excitement and her love for the theater that she covers. Read her in the Dallas Morning News. Pick up her book next year for kids, Irving Berlin, the immigrant boy who taught America to sing, and thank her so much for being part of the neighborhood on our Tony show. What a delight talking to Nancy Chernin. Thank you so much. It's a delight talking with you, Dave. Thank you for this wonderful show that gives people an opportunity to share about theater. I honor and privilege to be here with you, Dave. Thank you so much.